Greetings, Wonderful Mercy Church from Pastor Lee and Joni. We can't wait to give each one of you a big hug in the very near future. Hello, Wonderful Mercy family. This is Pastor Lindsay. I just want to say good morning. I miss all of you, and I look forward to being with you again. Hey there, it's Pastor Jim and my lovely wife, Beth. We want to get a quick shout out to you all at Wonderful Mercy. Hi, Wonderful Mercy family. We miss you guys so much. We're praying for all of you to be strong and healthy during these very difficult times. Murphy loves you too. Bye. Bye. Good morning, Wonderful Mercy. It's so great to worship with you this Palm Sunday. Hope to see you all soon. Hello, Wonderful Mercy Church from, from the, the Sellers family. I'm Anna Grace. From Naomi. From Sam. And from Karis. And from Sherlock. The Wonder Dog. Good morning. It is so great to worship with you this Palm Sunday. You know, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on a donkey, and thousands and thousands um, lined the streets and laid down palm branches in front of him, shouting, Hosanna. And it was a huge time of celebration. But Jesus, as he rode into town and received all of that, also knew that in just a matter of days, he would be headed to the cross. And it was on that Thursday night of what we call Holy Week that Jesus got with his disciples in the upper room and celebrated what we call the Lord's Supper. And he gave them bread and he gave them wine as they celebrated the Passover. And he said, this is my body and this is my blood, which will be shed for you. And they didn't fully understand, even though he had already told them that he was going to the cross. And so today we would encourage you with your families or just you and the Lord to, to spend some special time and have communion together. Hopefully you've got some juice and some bread at the house. Uh, if you don't have juice, uh, there's grace there and, and use what you need to do to remember the blood of Christ and the body of Christ. Um, I want to encourage you to, to find the Lord's Supper in your Bible and to read a version of that and to see what that was like. But also perhaps look into 1 Corinthians chapter 11. I'd like to read verse 26. That whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you are retelling the story. You are proclaiming our Lord's death until he comes. This is a difficult time for us. It's a difficult time for the world. And people need to know that there's hope. And there's hope in Jesus. This thing that happened 2,000 years ago when Jesus went to the cross for us so that we could have life and rose from the grave so that we could have eternal life. This is hope for today and it's hope for tomorrow. So share that and celebrate that with your family, but share that with your neighbors and your friends. You might have to do it from six feet away or through the internet, but share it because the love of Christ is real. Let's pray. God, we celebrate you today as we think of the Lord's Supper. Lord, we, we partake of your body and we partake of your blood Lord and we are so grateful for the cross and for the life that we have in you the life we have today and the promise of eternal life that we have with you forever God thank you for your presence with us in Jesus name we pray amen
eyes are forgiven Oh, I've been washed by the blood I'm no stranger to a prison Oh, I've worn shackles and chains But I've been freed and forgiven I'm not going back, I'll never be the same That's why we're singing all my hope is in Jesus Thank God my yesterday is gone Oh, all my sins are forgiven Oh, I've been washed by the blood Yes, I've been washed by the blood and moms and dads, it is our favorite time, time for Hippo. So I have a special friend here today, the director of our children's ministry, Miss Jennifer. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, everybody. She's going to help us out and hopefully we can, you know, deal with Hippo properly. He can be a bit sassy. I hope so. Are you ready? I think so. Okay. So we're going to need your help at home for bringing him out. So I'm going to count to three and on the third count, you guys are going to shout as loud as you possibly can. Hip, hip, hooray. Okay, do you got it? All right, do you got it? I got it. Okay, so we're gonna do this. Ready? One, two, three. Hip, hip, hip hooray! Hello! Hi, Hi. Pastor Lindsay. Hi, Hi, Miss Jennifer. Hi, Hippo. How wow. are you? That's lots of fun to have you here today. I was, I'm not really surprised it wasn't Pastor Lee. I think he got scared last week. Huh. I think so. I can imagine. Yeah, he's kind of, kind of, you know, courageless that way. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. Oh, dear. Hippo, let's talk nice about Pastor Lee. Um, let me think of, oh, okay, here's something nice about Pastor Lee. Uh-huh. Um, his name is easy to spell. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. That yeah. is true. You know, Pastor Lee is actually very sweet. Um, let's, let's talk about me. <laughs> okay, yeah. let's talk All about right. you, I'm Hippo. I'm way more interesting. Well, if yeah. we talk about you, Hippo, then I'll start off. How are you? Um, well, do you want the honest answer or do you want the church answer? Well, I want the honest answer. Terrible. Ooh. Awful. Oh, no. Rotten. Everything Why? is bad. Why? Well, because I can't go anywhere and I can't do anything except thanks to Pastor Lee from last week, now I have to watch my brothers and sisters. This whole thing is awful. I am so done with it. That is rough. Oh, yeah, it's rough. Boy, I'll tell you. Hey, Hippo, can I tell you a secret? Um, is it a secret where at the end I get candy? <laughs> Maybe. Oh, then yeah, baby. Tell me the secret. Did you know that today is Palm Sunday? Palm, uh, Palm Sun. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that means. Palm Sunday is the Sunday before Easter, and we celebrate when Jesus arrived in a town, and there were a lot of people who were really excited to see him. Mm -hmm. And so they got out palm branches, and they took off their coats, and they lined the, the walkway into the roadway into the, the city with them, and they shouted out praises to Jesus' name while he entered. And it's a great Sunday where we practice praising Jesus. Yep. 
Well, I got nothing to praise him for right now. I'm going to tell you that. I don't get to talk to or see Susie Squirrel. I, I'm at home, and I've got nothing to do, and my parents won't even let me watch the TV shows I want, and they won't buy me a new video game system, and my brothers and sisters, they're driving me up the wall. I've had, I'm, I'm so not praising Jesus for nothing. That's my commitment to you. Sounds like you're having a rough time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah I am. Thank you for yeah. noticing, Pastor Lindsay. You're that was welcome. kind of you. Yeah, I do notice a lot. But, yeah. Hippo, you know what? Sometimes some of the best things that we can do when life is hard is actually to praise God in the middle of it. What are you talking about? You mean in the middle of something that I really don't mm -hmm. like, saying, thank you, God, because I really don't like this. What a All bad right. idea. Well, Hippo, do you have a bed to sleep in? Uh... Yeah, in fact, do you know what my mom and dad got me? What? They got me one of those cool beds where the headboard lights up with all kinds of what? different colors. It's way Ooh. cool. That is oh. pretty awesome. Yeah, I love it. I've got a beautiful pillow. It's all soft, and I love going to sleep in that bed. Why? What's your point? Well, the point is that you can even thank God for that because not everyone in the world has a bed to sleep in or a house to live in or food in their refrigerator. Oh, that's true. You know what? I didn't think about that. Yeah. I just kind of just sort of thought, well, everybody's got a bed, but they don't, do they? No, not everybody. Ah, so, okay, so I could praise God for my bed. Yeah. That's, that's one thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is. You know what else you could praise God for? Uh, no. That, does he love you? Does God love me? Yes. Are you kidding? Everybody loves me. How? Come on. Well... You can also, even when things are really bad, you can always think back about what you know to be true about God and praise God for who he is. Mm -hmm. huh. Let, mm -hmm. Okay, like give me an example of how you would do that because I'm not sure I understand. Well, I would say that we can praise God and thank God for loving me, loving you. So, so I would say, dear God, thank you for loving Miss Jennifer? You could say that. I'd be in favor of that. But you could also <laughs> say, thank you, God, for loving me, hippo. Huh. So like this, dear Jesus, thank you for loving me, even though everything's hard right now and there's lots of stuff I don't like. Thank you for loving me and thank you for my bed and thank you for my mom and dad and thank you that I have parents who love me and thank you that, thank you that I have a really great church family and, mm -hmm. and thank you that I had so many toys to play with and books to read. You mean mm -hmm. like that? I Just do. Like that. Yeah, I don't know if I can do that. <laughs> Sometimes, Hippo, when I'm in a really difficult, when I'm having a really difficult time or I'm sad, what I'll do is I'll go in my room and I'll turn on worship music and I'll just listen to that and get really quiet and just listen to that for a while. And that helps me turn my attention to God rather than the situation. I don't often get really quiet, but I it's do a hard like thing to music, practice. so that's yeah. a good idea too. All of these ideas were good. You know what? I feel better even though when I came out, I didn't feel good at all. That's Thank good. Thank you both very, very much. You're welcome. You're welcome, Hippo. Man, you're the best. I give thanks to God for you guys. Jesus, thank you for Pastor Lindsay, and thank you for Miss Jennifer. They rock. Amen. Bye. Amen. Bye, Hippo. Bye, Hippo. All right. Thank you, everybody. Hippo, thank you for so much uh, helping us to learn what Palm Sunday is all about. Do you have anything else to say? That's what I thought. But Pastor Lee has more to say. Pastor Lee? As we move into our Holy Spirit time, I would like to make use of the Psalms as a way for us to think about how God might be speaking to us today and enabling us to, as the psalmists do, cry out to God with our concerns, our thoughts, our anguish, whatever it might be. And uh, today, as we, as we think about the things that are going on around us, I'd like to make use of uh, the way the Psalms uh, do that to help us think about uh, and listen for what God might want to say to us today. Uh, there is a, 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 a quote from Jan Johnson uh, that is, uh, I think, helpful as we think about the Psalms. He says, uh, resting and reflecting on the God encountered in Scripture is encouraged in Psalms and Habakkuk with the word Selah, which occurs 74 times. 
And though it is often dismissed as a mere musical notation, most commentators agree that Selah was inserted at points where the singer or the psalm reader should pause so listen, listeners could reflect. And I'd like for us to maybe use that as our way of listening and reflecting on uh, what is happening in our lives today. So I'm going to uh, look at Psalm 3, Psalm of David, and uh, there are three parts to it. First of all, there is this pain, the present situation, and then Selah, which is a pause. Secondly, then there's prayer, um, a, a prayerful pause after that prayer. And then thirdly, uh, the provision is a grateful pause. So in Psalm 3, listen to the words of David. Lord, how many are my foes? How many rise up against me? Many are saying of me, God will not deliver him. Selah. Pause. The second part. But you, Lord, are a shield around me. My glory, the one who lifts my head high. I call out to the Lord and he answers me from his holy mountain. Selah. Pause. Reflect. The third part. I lie down and sleep. I wake again because the Lord sustains me. I will not fear, though tens of thousands assail me on every side. Arise, Lord, deliver me, my God. Strike all my enemies on the jaw. Break the teeth of the wicked. And from the Lord comes deliverance. May your blessing be on your people. Selah. Pause and reflect. So as you think about today, perhaps be willing to cry out to the Lord in your anguish, your, um, your disappointment, your fear. Be willing to do that. And then pause for a few moments to reflect on your feelings and what's going on in your life right now, just for a few moments. And then for the second part, do a, uh, a prayer, a prayer to God, asking Him, to come to surround you with his love and grace. Selah. And then reflect on the meaning of that. Thirdly, think of the blessings that you've already experienced. The, the word that comes from God to you that he is always with you. That he loves you. And that he will protect you. Let his encouragement, his presence in your life surround you now in the next few moments. Selah. Pause. Listen to what he might be saying to you. Lord, we thank you for your presence in our lives. We thank you that you hear our prayers, even our prayers of discouragement and anguish. We thank you that you are there to hear our honest concerns. And yet you provide us with your word that says, I am with you always. I love you and I will always be with you. I will be your protector. Lord, thank you 
for this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hi, my name is Jim Beadle, and I'm the administrative pastor here at Wonderful Mercy Church. Got a couple of items that I'd like to share with you. The first of which is a reminder that immediately following the service, we have prayer team members that would love to pray with and for you. And the way that we can make that happen is if you will send your name and your phone number in an email to prayer at wonderfulmercy.org, then immediately following the service, one of the prayer team members would love to contact you and spend some time praying with and for you. The other thing that I wanted to talk about this morning is just a note that you received uh, from me about uh, kind of our life together and what I really feel is a tremendous opportunity for us as individuals and as a body in that we've been forced to do our life together a little bit differently. And that's everything from our services to video devotionals and the way that we connect with each other. And it occurred to me that it's a great opportunity for us to reach out to our friends, our family, our acquaintances, our coworkers, people that probably would never set foot in a physical building with us. But if we would be willing to share those resources, we want them to experience uh, the love of God, the care of other people, the encouragement and the hope that are contained in those messages. So that's my encouragement to you and an invitation to share those resources. And then as you hear stories or as it impacts your life, would you send me a note and let me know what God's doing in that manner? And now a word from our children's ministry director. Hi, kids. It's Miss Jennifer here. Happy Palm Sunday. I hope you're having a great time celebrating with your family. I wanted to let you know that I sent you some more mail, snail mail, uh, for Easter to help your family get ready for celebrating the great news that we celebrate about Jesus on Easter Sunday. And I also wanted to remind you to don't forget to check the link that we are posting. It'll take you directly to the Crossroads Kids Club YouTube channel. And this week, I want you all to watch the Palm Sunday video. And there's other videos there, Bible story videos and music videos that you can watch. And um, don't forget to do that. And leave me a message in the comments section. I'd love to hear from you. Happy Palm Sunday. Hey, it's time for us to talk about this morning's uh, continuation of our worship service, and that is in the area of giving. So we want to encourage you to make this an active part of your experience with us and worship God through your gifts. You can do that in a couple of ways. You can go to our website, wonderfulmercy.org, or you can go to our app. And in both places, uh, you can click through with just a couple of uh, clicks. Uh, you'll be able to set up one time or recurring giving. And thank, for, thank you for your faithfulness in giving. It is a blessing to us as we continue to further God's kingdom. Let's pray together. Father, thank you for this morning. We do pray that uh, you would use these gifts to further your kingdom. Lord, uh, everything that's happening uh, in our city, in our state, in our nation, uh, Lord, all of it's under your control. And we submit it to you. We say that we trust you in that. And we trust you with our finances. We trust you in a way that allows us to give in this time of uncertainty. Bless these gifts in Jesus' name. Amen. We're so glad you joined us this morning for online worship with the Wonderful Mercy Church community. And as we move into our teaching time this morning, I want to introduce our presenter. He is David Hammerslag. He's an elder at Wonderful Mercy Church, and he's a certified spiritual director. And as the coronavirus was beginning to make its presence known in the United States, David wrote a blog posting in which he presented some questions that the Lord may be inviting us to consider. And as I read those questions, I thought this would be ideal for the whole Wonderful Mercy family to consider, because I think these questions are on the Father's heart, and they can open up new ways of doing life together and of experiencing his love. So with that, I welcome David Hammersley. Good morning. 
Thank you, Graham, and good morning, wonderful Mercy family and friends. Recently, I've found myself thinking about Mary, Mary, the mother of Jesus. This may seem an odd thing to you. I know it did to me. We usually think about Mary around Christmas and Advent time. That's, that's her time, Mary and Joseph. Most of us aren't thinking about her in the spring, but there's a good reason why we might want to. You see, Christmas is about nine months away. That means Jesus was conceived in Mary around this time of year, late March, early April. Much of the church remembers Mary and celebrates her in this time, giving thanks for her faithful yes to God. A second reason it may seem odd to be thinking about Mary is that she has absolutely nothing to do with the COVID-19 pandemic. And if you're at all like me, that's pretty much what I've been thinking about. I have a hard time thinking about anything else. And Mary's story has nothing to say to us and the situation we find ourselves in. Or does it? Mary also lived in a very difficult time. She was a young teenage girl living in a culture that didn't value girls or women. Her people were living under an oppressive occupation by the Roman Empire. She must have faced dangers and uncertainties that make our current situation seem pretty tame. But there was a bright spot. She was engaged. She was going to be married. Her life was moving forward about as well as she could have hoped. At least until one day when an angel appeared with some startling news. In Luke's Gospel in chapter 1 from the Message Translation we read, Mary, you have nothing to fear. God has a surprise for you. You will become pregnant and give birth to a son and call his name Jesus. He will be great, be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will rule Jacob's house forever, no end ever to his kingdom. Now we know the rest of the story. We know that this was really good news. But Mary could not have known that. Instead, she had every reason to expect that her engagement would be broken off, that she would be a source of embarrassment to her family, an unwed, pregnant young woman. She would likely be shamed by her community. All of a sudden, her life was not going at all the way she had hoped or had envisioned it. For many of us right now, like Mary, our lives seem to be taking a sudden turn away from what we had planned or envisioned for ourselves. The economy's in rough shape. Our jobs are threatened or lost. Our movements and activities are restricted. And we hear constant reminders that someone we love or ourselves could fall victim to this new virus. Now the disruption in Mary's life was a result of her saying yes to God, her faithful response. And that's not quite the case for us. I do not believe that God has sent the pandemic to us and we certainly can't say yes or no to living in the middle of a pandemic. But no matter what happens in our lives, we do know, as Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. God causes everything to work together for the, the, for the good of those who love him. What good might he be working in our lives today if we let him? As Graham mentioned in the introduction, I've been thinking about four questions that it might be helpful for us to ask ourselves to see where God is moving in our lives at this time. The first question, what is God inviting you to? You see, when we are knocked out of our normal and well-laid plans, when our life seems to be going in a direction we didn't expect at all, it's good to ask ourselves, what is God inviting me to? There is always an invitation. 
When we are forced to let go of our plans, our ideas, our thoughts about how our lives should be, we are wise to ask Jesus, what are you inviting me to? How do you want to use this for my good? God has been inviting me to press more deeply into him. I'm invited to let go of my need to understand and control the situation. He's inviting me to reach out to others, to lift them up with words of comfort and peace. What is he inviting you to? The second question we should ask ourselves is, what is my temptation? Temptation really is the other side of the invitation coin, where God invites, the enemy tempts. In times like these, I'm tempted to double down on my attempts to control the situation. I'm tempted mightily to fear and anxiety. Others are tempted to greed and self-centeredness and isolation. Do you know what your temptation is in stressful times? Perhaps our gravest danger is that we fall into our temptations without even being aware of them or realizing it. We don't get up one morning and say, I think my best course of action today is to be fearful and selfish. Yet that's often where we find ourselves. By being aware of our temptations, we're less likely to fall into them. We must ask God, who knows us best, to show us where we are being tempted. Knowing our temptation is half the battle in avoiding them. A third question to ask is, what does God want to show us about ourselves? In times of stress like this, they it can be a great time of learning about ourselves. If we take the time to reflect on what we are feeling, we can begin to understand ourselves better. What activities and attitudes during the day do you find drawing you closer to God and his invitations for you? And what attitudes and activities are perhaps pushing God away? or pulling you away from God and toward our self-destructive temptations. A top tip, as you think about these things, write them down. A journal can be a great way to reflect over time. I must warn you though, um, what we learn about ourselves is often not great news. It's important to come to this self-understanding, but it can be hard. We may not like what we see. For example, I'm learning that I'm not as strong as I like to think I am. I cave into doubt and fear with alarming ease. Now on the plus side of the ledger, I'm also learning that cultivating a habit of regular times of prayer helps me avoid slipping too deeply into myself and keeps my eyes on Jesus where they belong. Those are both important things for me to know, and I'm glad I'm learning them. Finally, our fourth question. How does God want to use me? What gifts and talents has God given you that he might call you to use now? Are you given wisdom? Share it. Are you given faith? Step into the gap and lend your faith to those whose faith is wavering. If you have a gift of healing, employ it now by all means. Are you an intercessor? Intercede without ceasing. Do you have a prophetic gift? If so, use your gift to lovingly convey God's truth to those who need to hear it. No matter what gifts we have, we can build up and support those around us. We can be Christ's body on earth to minister to a hurting and anxious world. We have an enemy. He wishes to do us harm. And we can debate whether or not he causes illness, but there's no question that he uses the hard places we find ourselves in. 
our enemy desires that we stay focused on ourselves, on our fear and on our anxieties and not ask how we can effectively be Jesus' body on earth to those who are suffering and lost. The enemy wants us on the sidelines and out of the game. So, we had four questions to think about to ask ourselves. What is God inviting us to? What are we tempted to? What can we learn about ourselves? And how can God use us to work good for others? And asking ourselves those four questions is a good start. But our hearts often lead us astray. We don't know nearly as much about ourselves as we think we do. So instead of asking ourselves, or maybe in addition to asking ourselves, I invite you to hold these questions before our Father, the one who made us, the one who knows us intimately and loves us as daughters and sons. Try this, maybe this Sunday afternoon. Take a break from news and social media. Find a quiet place. Sit with God. Take some time. Allow your soul to settle. Ask him, Father, what are you inviting me to? Then sit and listen. Take your time. Allow your thoughts, your emotions, your soul to settle. Do this for each of the questions. Don't rush. Don't expect that you'll get a quick answer to any of them. Don't expect to go through them all at once. Take as much time as you need. It may be days on each question. Jesus will let you know when it's time to move forward. Like Mary, we find ourselves in difficult and uncertain times. And like Mary, we can say yes. If we take the time to seek the Lord and listen, we can cooperate with the good the Lord will do in us and through us. Amen. Thanks for listening. this life Jesus you have set me free for you alone took away our sin and disgrace when you gave your life to ransom me I am forgiven at the foot of the cross I am accepted by the power of your love, my every step is washed away. I am forgiven. Well, here I stand in the light of your glory and grace, where heaven's love and justice meet. Now I live. For the one who's called me by name Who is risen and alive in me I am forgiven at the foot of the cross I am accepted by the power of your love My every step is washed away Love
lavished on us my every stay is washed away I am forgiven I am forgiven at the foot of the cross I am accepted by the power of the Lord my every stay I am accepted by the power of your love. My every step is washed away. I am forgiven. As we now prepare to move into the coming days of this uh, very special week, receive now the blessing. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be and abide with us all. Amen. <laughs>